All right, and we're live here at the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neil. And this is Annabelle Lecter. And we're joined by director, co-producer, co-writer Dana Nofke. Hey, Lots of cool things. A co-producer, Chris Etheridge. Hey, let's go that on. <laughs> Hello. Of Eidolon, which we're going to talk about. I hope I pronounced that correctly. You did. Nice all work. Right, all right. Hurry. Job, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so proud of myself. So uh, I'll start, Dana. Can you give us an idea of what, uh, of what Eidolon is about? Eidolon is a supernatural horror film. It's a contained kind of woman alone in a house, slowly going mad movie, but there's a lot more to it than that. It's got a lot of twists and turns. Um, so it's about a woman whose life is absolutely perfect from the outside and a crumbling part on the inside who... Um, whose desire to be perfect and manifest this perfect life actually becomes a supernatural entity that she has to fight. So it's a little bit of a supernatural. It's a little bit of psychological. And I kind of compare it to like Haunting of Hill House meets Babadook. That's how I've been comparing it. Yeah. Been I think it. that's a, yeah, that sounds interesting to me. So how long have you been working on this? Cause I, um, from what I understand, it's been written for a while. Oh yeah. Well, um, both of you guys, I think, may have known my co-writer, Mark Shemansky, right? Mm -hmm. So we wrote it way back in woo, 2014. Um, and it was written as a contained movie that hopefully, ultimately, I would be able to shoot on my own because it's mostly one location and very small cast. Um, so Mark died shortly after the second draft of the script was written. And then it's come and gone in various incarnations since then so i've been pitching it around we came close to making it about five years ago but um, as happens in movie world uh, it all kind of fell apart at the last minute and uh you know i was just thinking about it a lot over covid and coming back around to it now so one way or another <laughs> do you feel like that amount of so you have this big chunk of time in between how do you think that helped because i could think if you have that more time well maybe you second guess yourself or maybe it gives you time to develop it and there's new things that happen with it yeah i think you know i think you're right i think it's a little bit of both there is a lot of time to second guess yourself and kind of you know over fiddle with the script or think should i do it this way should i do it that way but also we've picked up some really cool people and some support along the way because more and more people read the script and then um you know we've had several of mark's friends want to get involved in making it, um, you know, and kind of in memory of him. So um, that it, it's a good question. I, I don't know if it's helped. I, I almost feel like I'm in the same place I was nine years ago, but I'm sure that's not true because like I said, we've been kind of refining the script and picking up good people along the way. And that's, um, that's a huge help, obviously, in getting something made. Good people like Chris? Yes. Oh, yes. Well, it's debatable. But, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah, fair. That's fair, Neil. That's fair. <laughs> poor, poor Chris lives three miles down the street from me, so I can go and, and kidnap him at any moment. <laughs> how did you get involved, Chris? And how long actually have you known each other? That's a really good question. I don't remember exactly when we met. Um, was it the Horror Pack shoot? I feel like it, it must have been. It must have been like right around. So right when Horror Pack started, which uh, is seven and a half years ago. No, no kidding. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that blows my mind a little bit, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so so uh, yeah, we met, I guess, on that shoot probably or, or right before or something. Um, even though we lived in Athens at the same time, just never, I guess, never, mm -hmm. never crossed yeah. paths. Um, and, and then, uh, you know, have worked on... I mean, obviously, Dana's very talented, and I've made several films, and so we've worked together on various things, and then have recently sort of like been trading off directing and producing, sort of, you know, like she'll she'll produce and I'll direct and vice versa, um, and that's and that works really well. That's that's been that's been a really great partnership, um, and uh, you know, so but uh, I've made a couple of features as, as I think you both know, but Dana has not, and and I you know, in very, I think it's very important that that. Uh, more people get the chance to make their first feature and and you need you know you need a support team you don't do these things by yourself you just don't there it's a massive amount of work to, to make a micro budget film um and so i wanted to help out as much as i could yeah yeah it's a big it's a big you know it's both a, i think a big jump up in terms of 
how you're perceived and doing something bigger. And at the same time, um, I feel like I feel very ready for it because when you've done like 11 shorts, what are you doing? But multiple shorts, right? It's <laughs> in a row. So mm -hmm. it's a little bit bigger logistically, but I feel good about being, you know, more than ready to dive into it. Yeah, I I would I used to always ask uh, people on the show like when they were making the shorts what like their goal was because it seemed like some people just made shorts and um and then some people would make them in hopes to make a feature or to show what they could do or for practice like so when you were making the shorts you you always wanted to eventually make a feature oh yeah yeah no absolutely um don't get me wrong I love making shorts but coming into this as you know a no budget micro budget filmmaker I mean it. it kind of stressful trying to pull all the resources together to do it. So um, yes, I love making art simply for the sake of, be, of making art. I love making movies with my friends. I We have a good time doing it. Um, but ultimately, yes, I have several stories that are features that I really would love to see made. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the same people involved uh, that were invo involved with your short films on this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have kind of a rotating cast a little bit, depending on, you know, who's available when. But basically, we've, we've kind of got a core of people that we stick with because I think, you know, Chris has the same uh, has the same policy that I do, which is I don't need to work with jerks. Um, no dicks allowed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> that comes up a lot with people I know. You know, they they yeah. work with people that they enjoy uh, being around, which seems like obvious, but I think it's good advice if you're if you're uh, fun to be around or not necessarily fun, but a good person to be around. Uh, more likely, people want you around. Well, you're going to be in this situation where you're with people for like 12 hours. It's going to get stressful. Yeah. It's going to be you know, and and especially when you can't pay people a lot. I'm always thinking, what am I giving these people who are working with me? What are we giving each other? And it's like, well, I want to give them a good experience. I want to give them something they're proud of that they can show when it's over with. And I want them to have enjoyed the experience. And if you have a jerk on set, then no one enjoys the experience. Um, so, yeah, we kind of have a, like I said, a rotating group of several people who we filter in and out of each other's films all the time. And Brandon Bishop says, and why do they keep hiring me? I don't know if this is someone you know. <laughs> That's an excellent question, Brandon. <laughs> Brandon is actually great. He's a he's a really talented. He's worked as AC on some of my things. He's worked as um, kind of a guy. He's a jack of all trades. What is yeah. he? What have you credited him with for, Chris? <laughs> I think I've used him as a DP once. Um, I you know. Yeah, like he he's he jack of all trades, but like particularly camera, electrical, lighting, like lighting is his. I mean, he's just you he's know, good. yeah, he's a fantastic. You know, and then you need that. Like like films don't films with with bad lighting are obvious. You know, like you need people that are very good at that. And Brandon's Brandon's amazing at it. So yeah, yeah, yes. And we have multiple people talking to you about you being a cool aunt. We have Blaze <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jelly Llama, which is a great name. <laughs> Okay, so I'm guessing that uh, I am guessing that my brother's kids are here. And if so, hello, Ella and Keller. And if not, I'll, I can be your step aunt, I guess. <laughs> that's, that's a wild guess. So. No, I should mention that uh, there's a Kickstarter campaign, which people can uh, go and check out. And um, what's the what's the process like of using uh, crowdfunding? <laughs> um, you know, I always said I would try not to do a Kickstarter only because mad respect to everyone I know who has done them. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work and it's a lot of stress. Um, so I think that whenever I hear people say, you know, that it's kind of the easy way out or something, I don't know that that's necessarily the case. Um, but at any rate, um, I spent about two months getting the campaign ready, just kind of building up an email list and thinking about perks. And then we, you know, shot some lighting test kind of teaser video to make our 
our campaign video. Um, and still, it seems like no matter how much time you spend doing it, once it starts, just like with making films, half your plans go out the window. Because like I had made all these graphics and different, um, I made a lot of different assets and like links to articles and various things related to the themes of the movie. And, and that didn't seem to be really hitting with people. So then you kind of change your approach, but it's just, um, it's just a lot of balls in the air and you're constantly pinging back and forth. And it's hard to put yourself out there and ask people for help. I mean, everyone's had to ask for help with something at some point and um, it's hard. Uh, but I will say people have been incredibly supportive. We've had like 155 backers. The first day we got 25% funded in like nine hours. Um, and since then it's been, it's been a roller coaster. We're almost down to a week. So I have a question on how do you make, because you've got the movie and it seems it's very mysterious and you need to hang on to that mystery. So yeah. how do you sell this to people where it's like you can only reveal so much how hard is that that seems just so tricky to like because yeah, you yeah. can't show trailer trailer it sounds like it that sounds on its own just so so challenging to do that's true i think i'm honestly kind of partly riding on mine and and chris's as well a reputation for for our other films and what they've seen us make and kind of conveying more the tone and the type of movie it is because it does have some really shocking twists. I think we're getting a bonus uh, cat appearance. So yeah. I'm a fan. There. <laughs> that <laughs> happens very often on the show. Yeah. He, he would very much like you to look at the campaign. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm just leaning more into doing um, you know, what type of film is this mm -hmm. and what's the mood and what are the the themes and then also kind of the story behind it because you know trying to get it made is kind of it's always an underdog story trying to get an indie film made right um but particularly with mark too you know i've i've also kind of leaned into letting people who know him know what his part was in it um He's awesome i only met him for one weekend yeah that what days of the dead yeah, it was Days of the Dead. Oh, it must have been Atlanta. Oh, yeah, really? So awesome. So do you have a Mark story or are you just in general hung up? I don't know. I think it was just, it was a crowd of people and he was just so, he just emanated this like kindness and humor and he had a cool weird shirt and he just seemed like the cool. I was always like, jealous of his Western shirt. Dude. Yeah, he was. Man, the shirts. <laughs> Oh, that's so great. I, that piece, that. Were you, I think you were the person that got the piece of art. I am. Thank you. Oh. It's in our hallway. I know. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah Annabelle, Annabelle did an amazing portrait of Mark and sent it to us. And so, yeah, it was beautiful. That's who he was when I met him was just this like. Yeah, it's real shiny, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, Mark and I once went out on, um, I'll keep it really short. We went out with my friend Kat to find the grave of the Georgia werewolf. Oh, it's a story about Chris. Have you heard this? No, far away. <laughs> it's in Talbot County. And it's this, this little girl who, you know, what parts of it are true and what parts are myth, who knows, but it's just fun. So whatever. Um, a little girl who probably honestly was mentally ill, but in, in her teens, who was found walking outside in the middle of the night and basically trying to eat cattle alive oh. and was actually sent over. She was uh, she was the daughter of some oh. some kind of merchants guy who owned a store, was sent to England to see a lycanthropist, a specialist in treating lycanthropy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she is buried in Georgia. And we're like, will we really find her grave? Is it really there? We have coordinates we have like you know so me mark and a friend went out to find it we get to town and we go to the coordinates and it's like a forest <laughs> and then we went to the gas station and started asking people and it was like friday the 13th because it was <laughs> and they're like we don't know what you're talking about <laughs> and then we we're getting ready to leave and like go just wander the forest and some guy on a harley comes by and he's like i know exactly what you're talking about that graveyard is on my is on my cousin's property if you want to follow me i'll take you there and i was like are we gonna die <laughs> i mean if we do die does it this is really cool that'd be a kick-ass way to die and uh against all of our 
better judgment we went with him <laughs> to the woods i know i know don't please i don't no, ever, i love this story don't ever tell my daughter i did this <laughs> and I, and the further we got into the woods the more mark was like i think this guy might really get lsd <laughs> and i was like yeah i don't know man. but i he I mean, we weren't really getting that vibe. It was just such a weird situation. It could have been anybody. It could have been someone, yeah. any kind of outfit that brings you out into the middle of nowhere. You don't know what exactly. you're doing. Exactly. No. no, exactly. So just when we were like, me and Kat and Mark were like, all right, we really need to turn around and leave. This is fucking weird. We've been, oh, sorry, excuse me. We've been walking well, around. Fine, it's fine. Fuck, right? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, they, maybe, yeah, they don't want to hear their aunt swear. I don't know, but but we're fine on the show. <laughs> We've been walking around for a while. We probably should turn around and leave. And I swear to God, there's an opening. And he's like, it's right here. There's a cemetery, yeah, the no. grave with the name, right there. Wow. And we sat out with that guy in that cemetery for like two hours drinking beers and talking to him. Oh, and wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure someone who knows where that is is probably pretty interesting. One way or the other. I don't know. If it's interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, he was good for an adventure, like something like he was the kind of person who you legit could get to do something like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Wow. I had met him several times. I think it was always at Days of the Dead, but uh, just like, like Annabelle said, just the really uh, upbeat guy and yeah. just very fun to be around. Oh, I'd love to hear that. So yeah, he, he had helped write Eidolon and he had really, really, um, you know, hoped to see it made. And so this is my college try. Um, he was right before he died. He was also up for, I don't know if you guys knew this. He was up for a role in the movie Frankenstein Created Bikers. Oh, really? Yeah. No, I didn't know that. He had auditioned for it. He had gotten the role and then he died right before they shot it. Wow. And I ended up set decorating that scene. So there's a big giant picture of him, an employee of the month picture on the on the wall. If you ever watch that movie, there you go. There's a little piece of trivia. He's the guy who had the original role. So, yeah. Very. Uh, Chris, did you know uh, Mark? I met him, uh, I believe, twice. Uh, not So not, not well, but he, he came to... He came to multiple, like I had screenings at, at the, there's a theater in Atlanta called the Plaza Theater. Um, and I had movie screenings and he was just like, he was just, you know, a huge fan of, of independent film and independent yeah, horror. He just first, loved it. Like, first in line, right? Yeah, you could yeah, always yeah. depend on him to show up for any yeah. event and support everybody. So. Yeah. Yeah. so, yeah, he just came up and introduced himself after the first time. I guess, oh, the first time was actually at um, Buried Alive when I screened Survivor Type there. Very and cool. he came and introduced, introduced himself after. Just, yeah, again, the nicest guy and just uh, so enthusiastic. It's, it's remarkable. Yeah. yeah. Um, there seems to be a big, um, like, community for uh, independent horror films in that area. Like, how did you both, both of you guys get involved? Like, did you know about this? Like, you know, how, how did you get involved with everyone else? I mean, Dana's, I think, a little bit more connected to the the larger horror community in atlanta than i am um but i think the minute you start making films and you start reaching out to people that it happens right you just you just and if you go to things like days of the dead right if you go and, and you're gonna meet people you're gonna like eventually all you know sort of become part of that same sort of group yeah yeah i mean definitely i think that um chris and i are like you know venn diagrams with like indie film in the middle and and both at the edges of kind of different things um it, it, atlanta's kind of unique i think in what a what a horror community we have like i don't know man like for a while we had splatter cinema um that's not going on anymore but hopefully making a comeback which were these awesome screenings where they would set up like um picture photo ops like evil dead they'd like set up a cabin and oh, nice. do a bunch of fun things um and then we have the silver scream spook show which like how many places can you go to see a live spook show um we have buried alive we have days of the dead it i feel like we have a a pretty solid horror scene here so i mean yeah if you're if you're into it and you start going to events i mean it's it's there um now uh chris i think sometimes people don't know what a producer does so uh what is your uh, what is your involvement in the movie actually <laughs> well it's funny i know from I, I experience know actually i don't know what a producer people. does so it's no it's um <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh yeah no um it's it's interesting like it's and it depends it's, it varies from from uh movie to movie um and and i'm not 
I guess I'm technically a co-producer on this one. I, I didn't want to take a full producer credit because I don't quite have the bandwidth to do everything that a full producer should do. But um, but in general, your 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 main goal is to get the movie made and make sure you're supporting the director's vision. So the idea is that you take a lot as much as you can. You take much of the sort of logistical stuff off of the director's plate so the director can focus on the creative side, like focus on, you know, the performances and, and the art direction and all, all the things that they need to do to make the film happen. Um, and so you're the one, you know, filling out paperwork if it's SAG or or, you know, making phone calls to like try and find a location and ultimately an in, independent film. I, I've never, never made a film as a director. I haven't done some of that stuff as well. And I know Dana does it all the time. It's just kind of part of the part of the deal with any film is that the director is a producer to some degree. But hopefully the the other producer or producers are are trying to take that type of workload as much as possible off the director's hands so that the director can focus on the creative vision. Yeah, it's funny because when uh, <laughs> when Chris asked me to produce his his short film Moonlight Sonata with Scissors, which I think you guys, I hope you guys saw it. You got to see it at Renegade, or did you miss? I it? saw it previously. <laughs> we actually went to that block and we missed the very first short, which we turned out to be. Uh... Which turned out to be us. I well, missed the first three minutes too for the same reason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All that to say, it's a really good film. He did so well, yeah. um, but and and it's been doing great at festivals, which is super exciting. But he asked me to produce it, and I said, "I'm not really so much a producer, Chris." And he was like, "I don't know. All you got to do is solve problems and keep people happy. Just like solve problems, make sure everybody's happy. It's fine." And uh, we had a lot of uh, a lot of challenges on that shoot. <laughs> and yeah. We got it made, so I guess I did all right. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, but no, there were there were there were problems that were like, like every I, I I you know I, I always say that, like there's there's no simple film right, but I, I really did go into that one thinking okay one location it's two days we're gonna knock this thing out it's not gonna be a problem boy was that a mistake. <laughs> Red Roof Inn was not in agreement with you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so broken down we have broken down cars our hotel oh. rooms for our cast and crew all got canceled it was yeah. it was a while. 90, 90 minutes of lighting set up and then like outside and then a storm starts like right oh, after wow. we got it all set up yeah it was just kind of crazy crazy stuff <laughs> so it is not anything really to do with any of the people actually involved it's just all of these circumstances oh, yeah. Wow. yeah no awesome people because everybody rolled with it everybody was cool yeah. everybody rolled with it mm. That's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it is. Uh, th this is Robert Alvarez. For Sometimes the names come up and sometimes they don't. He's not a Facebook user. But yeah. Oh, but for people just listening, uh, Dana is great at solving problems and keeping people happy. Aw, thank nice. you, Robert. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Moonlight Tonight is doing really well at the festivals. It's played a lot of places all over yeah. the world. And uh, what are the important, What? how important are festivals to independent film? For either of you, uh, okay, I'll, yeah. I'll, um, so I mean, it depends on it depends on what your goals are, right? So, uh, and and so this is Moonlight Sonata is a short, but I've had two features on on the circuit as well, and I know you've got one right now because I keep playing with it, <laughs> like we keep playing <laughs> at the same festivals, um, which which is great because it gives me an excuse to see Michael and Sophia way more than I normally get to. Um, but uh, if you have a feature a lot of times distribution is a big you know like getting it making distributors aware of it and then uh you know and then uh, the press that goes along with these festivals help make awareness for your movie because you're you know you're trying to sell it you're trying to um even if you even if you end up self-distributing you need you need press you need awareness for people to, to like to direct people toward it right so um i think for features it's it's much more valuable for distribution purposes for the shorts. Um, I think for me, for me, it's, it's, it's a networking thing. M m like almost, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, I, I would love everybody to see Moonlight Sonata uh, with scissors. Sorry. It's not, it's not just Moonlight Sonata. It's gotta have the like happy <laughs> part. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, um, but, but, uh, you know, in this scenario, I'm getting, I'm getting to play festivals. I've, I've, I've never played with features because it's much harder to program a feature. So you get, you don't play as many places. Um, so I'm, I'm getting to play festivals. I've never played before. I just played uh, Phoenix film festival, the international horror and sci-fi festival, which is, it was an awesome festival. It was really great, but I've, you know, it's, it's, it's a different type of festival from what I'm normally used to playing. So 
Um, and then Panic Fest is I've never never had the opportunity to do that, and I'm gonna get to do that in a couple of weeks. So that's really cool. Um, that's cool. And huge, huge horror fest. You know. Uh, yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, it's and, a loaded loaded lineup. Yeah, like a lot of big name people are gonna be there too. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. No, right, exactly. Like our our screening happens, and then Joe Lynch's screening happens right right after. Right, like it's just stuff like that. It's very very cool. Um, so uh, you know, and there's a bunch more, like a bunch more coming. I've got got some, you, you know several that i i've got a couple that i know are going to happen and then and then you know you submit to a bunch and you hope that you hope that you get in places but mm-hmm. i've got a couple of very positive looking larger festivals as well um that that i think that we're going to get to play at so so then then when you go to those you try and make the most out of that experience where you're around you know more successful people you know and try and learn from them and try and just you know uh t- take advantage of the the time there you know yeah, I've really missed going to festivals. A, it's just, it's nice to see everybody. It's a good time. It's nice to see everybody's art. It's nice to catch up. Um, but B, you know, sometimes like, so I'm in the Writers Guild now. So I'm, I'm not going to say I'm a pro screenwriter because I am not making like a full-time living at it, but I'm kind of headed in that direction. And it can be kind of a lonely enterprise. And a lot of times it's like you pour your heart into the script and then you print it out and you put it in a drawer. And it's like, what? that can't be right. Like, what? you know, and no one ever sees it. And so, I mean, we make art for people to see it, right? And so for me, it's about it's about networking for sure. Um, and it's about just getting an audience to see your stuff and getting to see their stuff. I mean, um, films for me are about connection. They're a way to connect with people. And so I want people to see them. And, you know, the festival circuit is, is for shorts, the number one way for that to happen. So there's so many people um, out there who maybe are in places where they can't access independent films. However, one of the benefits of Kickstarter things is that a lot of times you can access. So is that something that people will be able to do with this Kickstarter? You mean in terms in terms of being able to see it or be involved in it? Yeah, absolutely. We'll be doing a digital release, which is one of the perks. Um, and, you know, of course, the DVD release. So it, in all likelihood, those people will get to see it earlier than other people, um, possibly before festivals. I, you know, I can't guarantee that depending on how scheduling uh, plays out. But yeah, for sure. If you've ever wanted to be involved in making a film and, you know, you're or and you're not near a a film scene this is this is definitely a way to to get involved and to kind of be in early and hear about the process as we go i'm really big on sharing knowledge and i'm happy to talk with people about you know the process as we go as well i mean in the challenges too i'm i'm very forthright about it it's it's tough work So yeah, definitely. If you want to follow the Kickstarter pledge on the Kickstarter, we're sending out regular updates and we'll be, we'll be continuing to do that as we go through the process. And I hate to ask this, but if the Kickstarter doesn't uh, make all the money you're asking for, is the movie still going to be made? Uh, It's the million dollar question, right? Um, I don't know the answer. I'm going to be honest, because I've been working on it for almost nine years here. And um, I think that I'm going to say that if it doesn't, I, I'm going to kind of just step back, you know, step back. He's not being pessimistic. There's someone saying, don't be pessimistic. Yeah. You got to be realistic about it, right? Like, I, I sure hope we make it. I believe we can make it. Please, folks, you know, if you're interested, check it out because we got a week to do it. And I believe we can. Um, but it's always possible you don't, in which case, um, you know, I'm just going to have to kind of step back and, and figure out what's next. Uh, so what can you talk about some of the perks that uh, you mentioned, you know, people can see it. But what are some of the cool perks that uh, you didn't mention yet? Chris, you want to tell them about the one that everybody wants? Because I actually put more up. <laughs> oh, OK. Cool. Yeah, it's it's these Victorian death. What are they called? Victorian death, death? fortunes. Fortunes. Yeah. So it tells you. Uh, and everyone's very happy about these things. Cause they <laughs> 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 Who isn't happy about uh, death fortunes? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, no, it's it's really it's, they're hilarious and fun, and and you should definitely get one because <laughs> they're a blast. Um, it, I, I will tell you, it's it's this really nicely designed digital kind of two sided fortune card that tells you how you would have died in Victorian times in like this long winded Victorian language, and then gives you a link to a person who actually died in Victorian times the same way, and a lot of them are really bizarre. Um, there was one where a guy um, died. He was working in one of those incredibly safe and um, OSHA approved Victorian factories. Um, and there was a mouse and he opened his mouth to scream and the mouse ran in his mouth and got caught <laughs> in his throat and he choked to death. So that was one. Twas oh, death. Wow. <laughs> There and he was, choked to death, and we we all erupt into laughter. I mean, I even, you know, he'd laugh if he choked was. to death on a mouse. Feel free to laugh because that's ridiculous, right? I agree. I mean, we're all going one way or another, so it may as well be funny. Uh, one death by bear, out. right? Isn't there death? Oh, death yeah, bear? killed by a and, drunk. And, and no cocaine was involved. No cocaine was involved. Yeah. Yeah. Cocaine. No, this was vodka bear. He was a Russian bear. <laughs> Vodka um, bear, okay. There was one a person who got killed by uh, a coffin got dropped on them. So anyway, it's been fun researching wow. this. So that's one of them. Um, we put up a, a bonus perk for today and tomorrow, um, where at the level where you would ordinarily get an idle in DVD and then like a thank you and a few other little things, we've added in. Chris has Chris has added in a uh, mystery bonus DVD. Is okay. it, is it a mystery? Do we not want to say what it is? I don't know. I put mystery. It's mystery. up to you. Ah, it's a mystery. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. You'll never guess. <laughs> it may involve Chris, but anyway. Oh, all right. Cool. Um, so yeah, there's that. There's executive producer credits. There's there's like one where you get a mystery roll of film. We're literally going to have um, just the the uh, disposable cameras on set and have people take oh. pictures of things and then oh, I like that idea. We send it to you and who knows which way. Like yeah. So we try to keep it we try to keep it fun. Even though the movie is is pretty dark stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. we try to keep the perks kind of fun. Uh, this is from Sophia. Happy birthday, Chris. Oh thank you, Sophia. Oh, yeah, that's very nice of her. Uh, you are also wonderful. This is Scott Philip Gorgans. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. This I don't know why some some say uh, the names and some do not. It's very confusing. So, are you going to film in Atlanta? I assume so. Yeah. Um. Hopefully, we can stay. You know, on the one hand, we need a location that we can kind of fake out as isolated. Although, of course, the magic of movies means that we might be able to choose a different exterior and interior location. Um, the biggest thing is just uh, budgetary constraints. We have all these great places a couple hours away that are really isolated, but then you've also got to kind of trek your crew out there and put them up and bring all your equipment. So um, yeah, we're low key location scouting right now. And I'm, I'm hoping I've got a couple leads on things that are not too far out from Atlanta, but somewhere in the area. Are, are there a lot of effects involved in the film? It will partially depend on budget, honestly, um, how many effects we have. But yes, and they are practical. There will be blood, which I am super excited about. Um, there's blood, there's knives, there's ghosts. And I, I'm going to go on record saying that I hope that 90, 95% of that um, will be practical, yeah. Uh, Sean Polite says hello. Hey. These, I assume that you know these people. But. I do. And uh, Viva wants to know, what is the biggest inspiration for Eidolon? Viva. <laughs> That's my daughter. Oh, excellent. <laughs> I, I could have lied. I could have been like, oh, it's a random person. But <laughs> a really good question. So, um, well, you know, it's a, it's a loose reimagining of the yellow wallpaper, which I probably need to bug Viva to read, uh, which is a Victorian short story from the late 1800s by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. But this is, I mean, that's the inspiration, right? Because it's, um, it's a story about a woman going mad from basically the conditions that she's forced to live in. She's being ignored and she's being um, kind of gaslit into doubting herself so much that she actually begins seeing things. Um, 
so the story the yellow wallpaper was the inspiration for it and then we just started thinking about how how we could get how we could bring that into a modern audience and i think that because it touches on themes of you know sort of isolation and loneliness and mental illness and even in regards to mark being involved in it um I, I think that it will really resonate with audiences who are living in this kind of COVID adjacent era that we're in. Um, have, I'm curious if you guys have read the yellow wallpaper. Uh, I have not. The story sounds very familiar. I'm not okay. sure if I read it, but it sounds, yeah. does she end up staring at the wall? She does. And there's actually, she begins to see a woman in the walls. It's she's in the story. The woman is prescribed the rest cure, which is, oh, you're depressed. You know what I should do? We should do with you. We should lock you in a room with no books and no windows and nothing to do. And you just lay there until the rabbit hole of your mind makes you start to see women in the wallpaper. Um, that's mm -hmm. what the story is about. So I read an article where the author, uh, Charlotte Perkins Gilman, had actually discussed with someone that the inspiration for her writing this story was that she was being ignored by medical professionals, that wow. she was ill and they were dismissing her because she was a woman. So. Wow. So, yeah, I found that interesting uh, in in the description that um, the like the connection to mental illness and um and like the supernatural because I, you know, a lot of times that's what people thought uh, mental illness was at one time. Yep, exactly. And I do, I did read some interesting articles about the overlap. Um, and I think that, you know, some of it's ambiguous. You're not going to be totally sure what's real, but then it also begs the question of like, if you're experiencing it, is it real? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you see a woman in the wallpaper and I don't see her, it's real to you. So is it a supernatural event or is it not? And I think those are really interesting questions. Uh, Amber Cheney is the, uh, as the lead. Had you worked with her before? I have not. She's been attached to it forever. Bless her. She has stuck with this project, but Chris has. I have, yeah. So, uh, she, so I, I, I met Amber. So Amber uh, was um, Herschel's wife in season two of Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. And um She's in uh, in the first Hunger Games movie, uh, and uh, has done a bunch of bunch of cool things. Um, and she was in a movie I made called uh, "The Morningside Monster" or "Attack of the Morningside Monster," depending upon which uh, version you <laughs> you hunt down. Um, uh, but uh, it, and so yeah, I, I was very fortunate to work with her um, kind of early on in both of our careers, and uh, and she's become a very good friend. And so yeah, and she's a remarkably talented actress, and and definitely like has the chops to pull this off and it's, it's going to be a hard it's going to be, it's a hard role to pull off so you need someone who's really really talented to do it well there's also the thing you know i mean because it is so much one woman in a cabin i mean yes we're mm -hmm. very much dependent upon her and i have absolute confidence and um if people want to go and check out our kickstarter campaign um there's a little teaser video we just kind of did like some lighting tests and put it together into a teaser with a little bit of voiceover kind of a, a tone reel but even just from that you can see like just Beautiful. even physically how she really embodies it it's it's wonderful i'm excited to work with her uh you had mentioned mm -hmm. festivals already so the, i assume the idea once uh, it's finished is to uh take it to festivals yeah i think that um you know <laughs> we're kind of uh, I mean, you go into it with some idea of some various distribution routes, right? Like if A happens, we could go this route. If B mm -hmm. happens, we could go this route. But I I feel like most of the time at this level, the road is not entirely clear until you reach that fork. <laughs> so um, festivals are definitely on the table and several other things as well. But it's something that we're still all kind of, you know, uh, keeping in the back of our minds as we move through pre-production yeah. yeah and in terms of distribution in general right like it's 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 so crazy right now you just, everything's changing it's already it's already been changing um most like a lot of independent filmmakers are moving towards self-distribution you know doing film yeah. hub and then you know a few other things uh you can you can you know sell it the, the traditional way and then you probably don't see any money back you know it's it, it's just you kind of you kind of literally at this point have to like it could be different six months from now it could be completely different than what people are doing right now so you kind of have to wait and see anyway when when you're ready to go to to the market what the what the best options are 
I'm hearing kind of a key theme in filmmaking is flexibility. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Whatever you, you know, I storyboard. I love storyboarding. Um, I, it keeps me on track and I, I am a, a scattered thinker, so I need things to keep me on track and I know exactly how I want to look and I lay it all out in storyboards and I'm like, all right, this is how it's going to go. But I also know that's not necessarily exactly how it's going to go. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, yeah, I know which things I think, you know, part of it is knowing what your hills to die on are knowing what you can let go and what you can hang on to. And Kevin Smith of all people said something once that I was like, yeah, yeah, that's it. Right. Um, it's like someone comes out to you on set when you're a director, you're just like, yes, no, yes, no, no faster. This like questions just all day long. Um, and Kevin Smith was saying like, somebody comes up to you and they're holding a red shirt and a blue shirt. And they're like, which shirt should this guy wear? I don't know. Well, Either you know the answer and it matters and you've already thought about it and there's an obvious, well, he needs to wear the blue because blah, 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 blah. Or it really doesn't matter in this case. It's not a hill you're going to die on, so don't spend 10 minutes sounding. So just point at the blue, go, done, and that question leaves your brain and mm -hmm. you move on to the next problem. And I well, think it's like advice. Yeah, it's <laughs> solid advice, man. I heard that and I was like, yeah, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you said storyboard because a mutual friend of ours, uh, I won't say his name, but uh, he's very anti-storyboard um, uh, for the reason, what? though, you said that that uh, he said, like, you, it makes you, like, set in your ways. But you, you mentioned oh. that it uh, you have to be open to, to changing it. Yeah, definitely. It just, I mean, it's, you know, a lot of people don't use storyboards. That's fine. That's just how I think through what I want things to look like. And that's how I communicate what I want things to look like. But again, you know, sometimes too, I mean, I bring those storyboards to, in this case, Brian Redding, the cinematographer, and he's like, uh, what would you think if we did this instead? Or this shot's going to be really hard and take like this long. Have you thought about, you know, and, and yeah, some things are going to get cut. Some things are going to get added. But basically for me, it's important for me to know this is how I want it to look. And I, you know, I like um, my short film teaser. I tried to think of like each setup as a painting, a moving painting. And um, that was very particular and very stylized. I will definitely have to be looser with this because there won't be time for that. Um, but just, just having an idea of what the blocking is and a physical thing to refer to works for me. Yeah, I saw it, uh, teaser looks amazing. And uh, I saw a lot of my friends in it. So it was, uh, and if people, you can watch it on your website for if people haven't seen it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. And it was, it was a lot of fun to shoot, but it was, it was ambitious. It's huge. It looks like it costs a lot of money because it's like a uh, great production value. It looks, it looks amazing. Well, we got an incredible location. Um, one, you know, and um, one area in which I have a lot of resources is set deck because that was what I did for many years. I was a set decorator, set deck buyer. And so that's one thing that for sure it's, it's, I feel like I'm kind of becoming like Wednesday Adams meets Boz Lerman. <laughs> and I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm cool <laughs> with that. Um, so I, yeah, I, this too, I definitely have a very particular vision for the production design. Uh, Chris, when you're talking about distribution and ha everything changing, um, I assume that's something you have to really uh, keep, you know, uh, watch on because it's, it, you know, you went, you started the, uh, with DVDs and Blu-rays through, uh, your company and now the streaming rose up and, uh, where do you see it going? Like more streaming, less streaming? Or I mean, so I, I think the physical media side of thing is, is very much becoming a, a niche thing, right? Like you, you can tell if you walk into Walmart or Best Buy, yeah. like the, yeah. the, the today I saw Creep Show three has a special edition. Yeah, but it's, it's fifty. I know, I know, but it's fifteen hundred. Like they, they're, they're only doing fifteen hundred units of that, and that's Stream Factory. That's not a small company. It's, but yeah. they know that they're gonna, they have a limited audience for that film, so they, they, you know, print fifteen hundred copies, and that's it, and, and. And you're done and uh you know um and that's and that's you're gonna see more of that i think you're gonna see you know that's, and that's what we do right that's what we do is we do our limited editions of, of like smaller micro budget films 
uh, and they are limited to X amount of copies. Uh, you know, and and I think I think it's the right I think it's the right thing to do. You, you make it available, but you can't like you, you you have to you have to understand that fewer and fewer people are buying those things, and the people that are buying them love them. Like you know, I've got I don't know eight hundred thousand discs, something crazy like that, right? Um, and eight hundred or a thousand or eight hundred thousand? <laughs> no, 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 eight hundred, eight hundred. Yeah. I, I actually haven't counted. It's probably about it's probably somewhere between eight hundred and a thousand. I, I don't know. I'm guessing. Um, but, uh, but you know, that, 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 that you're going to see like places like vinegar syndrome and synapse and, you know, um, these, these smaller specialty companies that'll, you know, they'll do like, they're doing like 4k's now, right. They're, they're doing nice 4k editions of, of classic movies and, and they charge 40 or 50 bucks, but they make them really nice. And, and that's kind of where the market's going is that you're going to get like nice editions of, of specific films. Um, and then as far as streaming, you know, uh, I think streaming is an interesting thing for, for our level, for like the micro budget level, because you generally don't get a sale to like a Netflix or a Hulu. Like, it's so interesting because my first film, like Attack of the Morningside Monster was on Hulu. I played Hulu for like a year and a half. Um, my, my second film, Haven's End, couldn't, couldn't get Hulu. Like, it's just, like, they wouldn't even look at it. You know what I mean? It's just, it was too small at that point. Um, so it, they've changed what their what their model and now of course they're all making their own they're all spending all the, the tons of money making their own content um but uh and shut, shutters kind of sometimes you can get lucky with shutter right like shutter shutter will occasionally pick up a micro budget film if they like it um and then uh you, you know but there's very few places that will so most of your streaming is going to be your transactional you know the app, apple and itunes you know voodoo amazon uh per, you know amazon where you purchase it or rent it um and then and then eventually you get to tubi and amazon prime and you know the places that are ad based and i think i think for our for our types of films ad based is is probably where the most money is going to be seen right tubi still pays um fairly well anyway uh we've got a bunch of other ones coming out like freebie and um voodoo even now has free with ads right like a lot of uh so it's i think that's where our movies are gonna do do the best because they're they're more inclined to pick up movies of this size there because for for whatever reason that just seems to they seem to play better there because people just scroll scroll on to be looking for for whatever i know i've done that like what's the craziest thing i can find tonight you know that type of thing and, yeah there's some really i have been um very pleasantly surprised at the selection on Tubi many times yeah. and particularly um i run the gamut from these like crazy kind of you know uh, gothic ghost stories like this one to i absolutely love 80s slashers and uh man do they have a collection of 80 slashers holy cow they've got a lot of giallo too like they've got just a lot of interesting yeah. stuff that you may not find elsewhere there's, horror you know? horror. there's all kinds of and something i really love about tubi is i pick a movie that i think sounds good and then it just keeps playing things yeah so i can just pick up and be like oh maybe i'm off doing something else but it's still rolling on in the background and something catches my attention and there's a lot of things i found on tubi that i never oh yeah thought out i just wouldn't even know they existed yeah. yeah my mom watches actually a lot of horror movies on tubi and her little joke is she calls it tubi or not to be so, <laughs> shout out to my mom <laughs> So you have mom jokes instead of dad jokes? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, yeah. that's, but that, that, that's why I watch horror movies or movies in general. I watched them with my mom since I was a little kid. Oh, that's amazing. So um, actually, along those lines, uh, maybe a generic question, but how did you, uh, what's like the first horror movie you watch and what made you a horror movie fan? Mm, okay, so I know the very first horror movie I watched, but um, it's it's not one of my favorites um the very first horror movie i watched was silent scream and it's not a particularly great movie it's fine whatever but i kept coming back so apparently i liked it um i do recall being scared to freaking death by that uh anthony hopkins movie i still haven't seen the movie by the way magic, magic? yes okay 
When that's I, one of the few things that scared me as a kid is is the trailer for magic okay. yes it's Neil. the scariest thing ever yes the, the <laughs> little poem and then you're dead I'm like, it's in Monaco, so i was allowed to stay up late to watch saturday night live i was obsessed with it it's the only night i was allowed to stay up late and i'm convinced that must have been when they showed it because they didn't really show those earlier and for like a month i remember several times that's Stupid ventriloquist dummy would come on the scene with the eyes and do the little ants track thing. And I would run and hide behind the console TV and like cover my ears and make somebody tell me when it was over. And my brother would like chase me around and go, oh, it's magic and all so that. So another, my, my older brother, Troy, is often on the show. We had a ventriloquist dummy and he would tease me with it no. because this was, yeah, that's it's horrible. horrible. Yeah. I still have not seen that movie. I really need to sit down and watch that. Um, but it, it's good. But the trailer is, is scary. The trailer uh, is terrifying. My my all time favorite is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Always, always, always. And I got to uh, I got to sleep in the Texas Chainsaw House. Oh, I that's awesome! Over there in November, which was oh, that's a Ben Breakfast, right? What's that? Is it a bed and breakfast now? No, it's um. So it's actually a restaurant. They cleared it all out for us. It's on the um, grounds of a historic inn. So they oh. have like that's the restaurant. Then they have an inn next door, and then they have some like railroad cars that they've turned into <laughs> hotel rooms. And it was amazing. We got to tour. We got to watch the movies in the dining room. I slept in the bone room. I got scared to death in the middle wow. of the night. I could not sleep. And I kept creeping around the house like, oh, my <laughs> Lord. I was so excited. It was really fun. So, yeah. and how, how about Chris? What made you a horror movie fan? Elm Street 3. Uh, yeah, I just, my, so I was not allowed to watch uh, R-rated movies or really horror movies until until I was, a, you know, like teen, early teens, I guess. My parents finally, like, they gave up because I, like, I, I was persistent. Um, but they, but they were definitely was a, like a little sheltered content early on. So, but I went over to um, to a sleepover, um, one 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 night with a few friends at a friend's house who had HBO. And as soon as as soon as his parents went to sleep, like we popped on HBO, and it was in Elm Street three, uh, mm -hmm. and that movie blew my mind. You know, I, I hadn't seen the other two, right? I had no, I really didn't yeah. understand the study, right? It was just, it was just, this is amazing. I don't know what's happening, but I love every minute of it, you know? So, yeah. I assume you went back and watched the other two. Uh, when, at, at, at some point, yeah. It wasn't right away because I didn't really have access to do that, right? Um, but well, that's point, true, too. It's I mean, not I mean, like today where we everything We didn't have the here. internet. I couldn't just yeah. go, like, download it, you know? Like, it just, sort of, <laughs> it just wasn't a thing. So, um, yeah, but eventually, I, of course, eventually I did, yeah. Yeah. We used to, my brother and I used to um, get the little HBO guide and set the alarm because we weren't really supposed to watch it either. My mom wasn't like dead set on it, but we, you know, we weren't supposed to. If she knew, you know, um, we would set the alarm like for 3 a.m. or whatever time the movie came on. We went, oh, Friday 13th Part 2 is on at 2.45. And we'd set the alarm and get each other up and run downstairs and watch it and then go back and pretend we were in bed. So. <laughs> So Eidolon, we have the Kickstarter link. It's scrolling across the bottom, and I've uh, shared it a few times. We'll have it on the website and everything. Um, wh when do you hope to start filming it after uh, the Kickstarter? It's successful, so Sophia doesn't get mad at me. Yeah, no, let's say we can do it. Um, it it's going to move pretty quickly. I mean, we've been at it for a while. We're basically cast. You know, I'm working on finalizing some casting right now, but there are people who are coming on board. Um and it's probably i'm going back to school in the fall <laughs> so i've got that coming mm -hmm. uh so this summer you know hopefully ideally i mean i it could conceivably get pushed but i'm not sure when we would push it to but i'm if i had to guess i'd say like july late july to very early august sometime yeah. and uh where can people follow you to see what you're up to not like back to your home, but, you know, on the Internet. Yeah, please don't. Uh, <laughs> I'm everywhere. I'm on Twitter I'm, as Dana Director. I'm on Facebook under my name and also under Dana Naki Director. We have a page for Eidolon. You can see how it's spelled about the Chris. If you just search Facebook for that page. Um, a lot of our social media stuff's coming through there. I'm on Instagram as Dana Director as well. 
And I still owe you some vodka from many years ago. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. We can discuss it. <laughs> I mean, we can discuss it now, but. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Chris, where can people follow you? Uh, yeah, I generally live on Facebook and Instagram. So Chris Etheridge Film um, on both places is is probably the best place to hunt me down. Yeah, it was funny when I saw Chris in London. I thought it was the first time I saw him, and he's like, "We, you didn't, you interviewed me in Buffalo." And I was like, <laughs> right. oh, yeah, that's great. Right, yeah. <laughs> that was a, that was crazy. Yeah, so Buffalo, that was Buffalo Dreams. Fantastic uh, film. It's a very long title, Mister Lamberson. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, Buffalo. Yeah, yeah. It is a very long title um that was cool that was a great interview that was um that was uh that weird hotel right with like like the it was, it was kind of like if liberace had a hotel in, <laughs> it was um, it was very I weird mean, where? Uh, in buffalo, it was in buffalo. <laughs> yeah it was a big, Crazy. and uh jason who i was staying with uh mitten he was making fun of me but i went around the hotel because they had all these statues and i was like they, they all of them had like penises but they they had put and you could tell that they put it uh, afterwards. They put like leaves over the penises, but you could tell like they weren't there originally. So I was going around taking pictures, and he just thought I was crazy. But I found it very, very interesting. Yeah. Oh, it was. Yeah. It was very I mean, funny. It, it is a one of a kind, uh, one of a kind establishment for sure. Like kind of yeah. like Caesar's Palace. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it was very weird. It was very okay. Weird. You know what was a really cool hotel? Remember that hotel when we went to Chattanooga Film Fest? Oh yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the historic uh, something or other. Yeah. Yeah, we stayed at a historic hotel there that was really good. It had like a the Shining elevators. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, that's always fun. I mean, it, sometimes you have to stay at, you know, the Motel 6 weird, but it's cool to stay at some someplace weird. Mm -hmm. For sure. Impossible. Yeah. All right. Um, anything you would like to tell everyone bef uh, about Eidolon before we uh, before we go? Ooh, I don't know. Um, I will just I, I will just put it out there and say as of tomorrow, we have a week left. And, um, you know, I really would like to ask everyone to help us push to the finish line. I think that I think that it's a story that's really going to resonate with audiences. Um, and I also feel like this is a great chance to get involved in something that has some really good thematic content, too. And I also want people to know, you know, I know that I've had a lot of my friends contact me and say, I'm so sorry, I don't have any money right now. I'm like, look, this is not a guilt thing. This is a chance to get involved in something cool. And if you're not in a position to donate, I totally get that. Yeah. But you can still help us. If you um, interacting with our posts, even liking our posts, sharing our stuff, following the campaign, all of those things help put it in front of other people. So I am grateful for every every dollar donation, every share, every encouraging word. Um, so, you know, I hope that people, if you, if you want to learn more about it and you want to be involved, we'll go check it out. And we do have, we do have a really wide range of monetary, um, you know, our perks go from $10 all the way up yeah. to like executive producers. So definitely go take a look at the teaser, check it out. Send it to someone you think will like it, and um, yeah, send us all your good vibes because tomorrow's tomorrow's one week. We're at the final countdown. Yeah, and like you said, every little bit helps. It adds up. Absolutely, absolutely. It does look really beautiful. Thank you. And I know from yeah, it really it is very very art. It looks like you mentioned a painting earlier, and it has that style to it. It's really really lovely. So anybody who's even questioning it. It's free to go to the website. Like you can go look at it and then. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Please, please go check out the teaser because, you know, we worked hard on it. So absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Sean Polite says, if you can't spread out your wallet, you can spread the word. Hey, thanks, Sean. <laughs> yeah, very nice. All right. Well, this was great to talk with you both. We should do it more often. I think I've been talking about uh, Dana coming on the show for years now. We have. This about is 12 awesome. years or something, but yeah. Yeah, after uh yeah, our all night Uno uh Yeah. <laughs> Uno. See, people think I'm a boring guy, but I know how to party play Uno in the lobby. Uno. <laughs> well, so sometimes you know how you go to some cons and you're like, Yeah, things are going all night. This is great. And sometimes you go to a con and you have a great time and you don't want it to end and it's like one AM and you just start walking around looking for people to play Uno with. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do man. yeah I, cat made up her own rules i, I don't know i, I don't know which it was, how she played that who know but that's how she lives her life <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
but it was still it was very memorable it was a fun time it and i drank good. all your vodka but it was, it was still good. <laughs> all right well thank you everyone for watching and yeah. thank you both for coming on thanks annabelle for being here yeah it was so great to be here with you guys i miss i already as soon as i left i was oh i loved meeting you guys in person because i don't Dana, I'd seen you, but years and years and years ago. Chris, I don't think I ever met you before. No, we never met before, yeah. It was awesome, awesome experience, and great to have you guys here and to have uh, have your film showcased on our show. Well, thanks so much. Thank and, yeah, hopefully we'll see you soon, and we'll have uh, we'll have good news next week. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. All right, Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. We're going to play us out with uh, Music of the Month, Strange Nocturnal, and go and donate to Eidolon. I have to make sure I'm hitting the right thing here. here we're still live i believe but yeah <laughs> all right strange nocturnal for uh for the music of the month here this is the second time i've ever used this so we, we don't have every all the kinks worked out but i think it's going pretty good yeah so we're back we are back yeah <laughs> are we still live we are still live but we, we oh my we can... god i should totally tell the texas chainsaw massacre house story yes. Yeah. All right, let's I hear it. Time for the I was, I was saying, but if you really actually want to hear it, I will tell you. I would love to hear it. Yeah. Ready. Poor Chris is like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Story. Um, <laughs> so I, as I said, went to uh, spend the night in the Texas Chainsaw House. Are you guys familiar with um, On Scene Cinema? Kenny, can't remember his last name. There's a guy who owns a replica of the Michael Myers house in North Carolina. It's called the Myers house. He does screenings. He does occasional tours for charity, different things. He does little festivals in his yard and it's an exact replica. Wow. So he started doing a thing called all scene on scene cinema where you get to visit locations. And he's the one that put together the um, Texas chainsaw sleepover. So 
Um, first off, I got there and everyone was amazing. It was the most like amazing group of super excited, super cool freaking people. And we played, you know, we went on the tour, we played horror, we played horror trivia and different games. We had barbecue, we watched the movies in the dining room. And then he said, Hey, if anybody wants to go sleep at the inn and not sleep on an air mattress, they have extra rooms. They said you could have them for like 60 bucks. I'm going over there. You do what you want. Just lock the door because fans show up all hours of the day or night. Put that in the back of your head. So um, only like six of us stayed out of 13. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I paid a bunch of money to sleep here and I will be sleeping here. Not sleeping here. Staying here. So I was so excited and so jacked up. I was with my friend Tempest and uh I was like, I'm going to sleep where the bone bench was. It's that. So I slept under the final window that Sally, not the first window she jumps out of, but the window she jumps out of downstairs to actually really escape. I put my air mattress right under that. And I was like, yes, yeah, good spot. But I could not sleep. And my friend Tempest went to bed. She was like, Dana, I know how excited you are. I respect that. Don't wake me up. <laughs> don't do it like have fun do what you want don't wake me up i was like okay so we were the only ones sleeping downstairs so i could not sleep i kept wandering around the house and i was just like oh my god oh my god and then i thought if someone wakes up they're gonna think i'm such a creeper but i was absolutely convinced that someone was gonna jump scare us since the guy who was running it had gone over to the inn like 2 a.m Someone came downstairs and I got all excited and she was like, no, I'm going outside to smoke. Let me back in. I'm going back to bed. It's like, okay. So she went back upstairs and I'm just wandering around again. I was like, I really should try to go to sleep. So I laid on my air mattress, just laying there like, oh, can't sleep. And then I heard a noise and it was like, a, it was, I don't know. It was like, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, it's happening. You guys, it's happening. <laughs> So I thought they were trying to jump scare us or I was like, maybe I really am going to die. And if I am, again, I guess that's the way it was meant to be. I brought this on myself, really. And I peeked out the door, out the little window shades, and there was no one there. And the noise kept going and it was really loud and buzzy. And I was like, what the hell? So I brought my air mattress over next to Tempest. And I was like, Tempest, Tempest, you got to get up. There's a noise. And she turned over. I swear to God, she just looked at me without even opening her eyes. She was just like, Dana, no. <laughs> and I was like, like you're going to die because I'm going to run. <laughs> so I laid there and I was like, it's got to be like, what is this noise? You know, because it was really loud. And it finally stopped. It must have been like, I don't know, three, four minutes or something. I was laying there. I was like, God, what was that? And finally, I, I was like, oh i'll bet you it was the air mattress pump Stop. i'll bet you that's what it was <laughs> and in the morning the woman who had come down i was like did you by any chance pump up your air mattress at like three in the morning and she was like oh yeah was it loud <laughs> <laughs> so i was i so i was convinced i was going to get chainsawed but i think i was okay with it too so. <laughs> <laughs> it, like it was a great time. It was probably better off to stay up, though, because you got to explore things. Other people probably didn't get a chance to. Yeah. Yeah, it was really yeah. fun. <laughs> well, I'm glad you didn't get chainsawed. Yeah, yeah. I think we all are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it was, it, it was for the best in the end. I'm just saying if it had happened, right. it would have been an appropriate. It would have been cooler than the mouse in the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been an appropriate end. <laughs> Would it have been cooler than a random dude like taking you out in the forest where the, the mm. werewolf girl's grave was? I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I think we have less chance of finding about out about that. That's true, yeah. You need someone to tell the story. That's true. We wouldn't have had any survivors. Right. The ch I think we'd probably eventually hear about the chainsaw. Yeah, true, true, true. Mm. Yeah. Well, but still, I, I, I'm glad you're here. I was like, if we're staying here, somebody else tell an amazing story now. <laughs> uh, Chris, then we're putting you on the spot. Tell us a story. <laughs> you. <laughs> no horror stories? Oh, we got to work on that, man. <laughs> well, I just noticed. Is that a nightmare? Uh, it sure. is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, very cool. Cool. This is last year. So. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I, have, I was going to wear my Renegade shirt, but I'm in my basement and I'm very cold. So I have a sweater. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. 
So what other horror movies do you guys like? Just generally. Like if you were going to pick something out, like a few different things to recommend to others. Let's go with that. If you're going to put out some recommendations, okay, horror world, here are the things to watch. So my question has evolved. Sorry. <laughs> it started Should they be right? underrated things then? Should they be things people might not have seen? Because good that's, God, yeah. fans know everything. Right. Yeah. That's it. That's I think that's uh that, yeah, I think that's good. Because like I love Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but I assume most people listening have heard of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um well if you like TCM, okay, here's a here's a semi deep cut slasher, and I hope some of you guys have seen it so we can talk about how great it is. Um The Burning. Oh yeah. I'm a, a huge fan of the burning. Uh back in the eighties I had the I don't rec I don't you know, I'm not condoning bootlegs, but I had the you know bootleg because it was very hard to, to get at the time. What was the story of the burning? Because I'm confusing. It's it very right. much like uh, Friday the Thirteenth, but it's uh... oh, it a. Oh, is that Alexander in it? Is that yeah, the uh, Savini did the special effects? It's a uh, guy with the big clippers. Does it have? Um, I does it have the guy? It's got the guy from Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Yeah, that's Jason yeah. Alexander. So yeah. yes, I have seen that. It was amazing. It was a Halloween land just several years, quite a while ago now, over 10 years ago, and it was just on. This is another one of those things that was just randomly existing. Yeah, no, it, it's great. Yeah. Great. And Paul Bear Press used me as their t-shirt model for it, so uh, it's Wait, even what? more thumbs up for me. So, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know there was a t-shirt. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. What about Long you, Javel? What's your, like, even kind of, well, that wasn't that deep a cut, but, you know. That was a good choice, though. I'm so bad under pressure. I probably shouldn't put people under pressure because my brain. <laughs> I just saw, I will say, Tubi had, was it which? Oh, not witchcraft. I'm going to have to find it. It was, but it was just madness. It was so crazy. It was, um, there's like a melting person in it that took about like seven minutes to melt. And it was, but I loved it. I'm like, okay, they're really invested in showing this melt. Someone's head exploded. And I know those are just two small things, but they were meaningful things to me. I can't say it was a good movie because it wasn't. Yeah, melting but people are very, always a plus, I think. Because it I'm was not that. good. And head explosions. I like a funny horror movie. That's part of the thing. I love scary movies. I like, like just a diverse kinds of horror, but I do love ones I can just laugh like the old ones i could just laugh at and be like this is so well, i think that's what's cool about horror movies though it depends what mood you're in you can watch all different kinds so are you a raimi fan because that's like tcm and raimi are like my yeah, yeah. top top okay very good and uh, chris must know all kinds of underrated horror movies he does I, uh, well i mean <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I also do like freeze a little <laughs> when I put on the spot, but um, I, I like what is it? Uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Oh, that's for, fun, yeah. for a funny mm -hmm. like I, that movie. Just I laugh my head off watching that one. Um, that's a, that's a really great one. Uh, I, I like Mike Flanagan stuff a lot. I'll, I'll like mm -hmm. you know Haunting of Hill House, obviously a TV series, but just remarkable. Um, I really like Midnight Mass. I like yeah, the new one too, Midnight the Midnight Club. I thought that that's not aimed at the same audience. It's kind of aimed at a younger audience. Yeah. Um, but I just I just kind of like most of everything that he that he does. Uh, um, what's the crap? Uh, the one with uh, the one of the mirrors with uh, Karen Gillan and Octopus. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. Oculus. Yeah. Yes. That was really cool. Um, you know, again. The, I, I don't know that he's underrated. I think a lot of people like him, so it's not quite the same thing. But, um, but he's been doing a lot of good work for a long time, not just mm -hmm. not just with Netflix, you know. So, which trap? Which trap? Okay. Yes. Oh, no. oh the movie. Of, okay. Like, I loved it so much. I, I thought it was a question. Trap. Which trap? But I see which, which trap. trap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I loved it so much that even though I woke up because Tubi was just rolling and I woke up and saw like the final quarter of the movie and it was so insane. I just, I posted about it immediately. It's hellish frights await a team of paranormal psychologists hired to exercise a witch's evil spirit. It's overtaking an inn with haunting disturbances. I feel like it comes from, um, what is that witch board? The Ouija board movie? Because there's 
like the villain in that, the big scary dude with big white hair, is so in witch trap. But they don't name it for whatever reason, but he's like the evil guy. So I don't know what was going on with rights to films, but the early the early cloning of like the asylum style cloning of existing movies, right? Yeah. yeah. Which board was another one? The which board was another one that I watched at my friend's house like after his parents went to sleep back, back when I was growing up. That was another early, early horror classic. Yes. I love I'm that. sold on the uh I'm sold on the melt. I just <laughs> Chris knows of my aversion to CGI blood and I do get the necessity for it sometime, but I'm like, my God, man, you've got money. Like CGI is meant for other things that is not meant for blood. So I want mm. rivers of blood in all the movies. Yeah. Blood yeah. and fire rarely works with CG. So have you, so Dana and I just recently had a really interesting uh, experience with scream six where uh where yes. we went and saw it with a bunch of friends in 4dx and have you either, either you done 4dx yet no not 4dx i've no, seen screen six but not 4dx yeah so 4dx you know puts you in a moving chair and oh. there's like there's like wind and there's like water effects and oh, stuff. Yeah. Like, oh. so I, I, has this <laughs> right so so and i had seen um, i think there's like, actually a theater in boston that does have this. Oh, you there's should. probably one there's there's only 32 <laughs> in the entire country and la has like six of them but wow. you know like the, yeah there there are a few lana's got one um but what i had seen i think spider-man in it before uh mm -hmm. and that was fine like it was fun but it just kind of joggles you around like a roller coaster right but scream six did uh did something remarkable because the, the they had these like literally behind your ear they have like air bursters so oh, when, wow. when they would slice the knife like it would fire air so like it was just missing you oh wow like, and then and when blood splattered they would splatter water on you like from because it shoots wow. at the front so like you get <laughs> and then like even the this chair has little things where like when when someone gets gets stabbed it can like actually punch like push push into your side a little bit it was a really like it's really a remarkable experience because it because it it puts you into the movie in a way I had never like it 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 made it physical and it was just it was so I mean you t Dan, I'd love to hear your thoughts but I, I thought it was incredible it was it was so cool and yeah the the um I was not prepared I didn't know what it was going to be like mm -hmm. at all so it's not on the level of like the 4D rides I mean you're not like strapped in or anything but yeah it was it was crazy it was a little bit disorienting and it was really cool but um. Some of the coolest things I thought were a little bit when it was a little bit more subtle, even like when someone's falling forward and it, or there's a long pan and the seats just kind of. Oh, ooh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That's right. Move. Yeah. And then when the phones ring, like your seat vibrates, like your cell phone's going oh, off. Yeah. yeah. Which is, I mean, was very, uh, very well done. But I was, my husband was laughing so hard because Chris had a beer and Jason oh. looked over at one point and, and Chris <laughs> I was holding it up because oh, you, you can't leave it in the cup holder. Like it, it'll, it'll splash out. <laughs> I was dying. Like I thought I had a lid and it was still splashing around. <laughs> yeah. Beer. So this uh, is yeah. William's Castle stuff brought to yeah, the, yeah. brought to the now. It's yeah, it is. It really, really is. Yeah, no, you're right. It's it's like the tingler. Um, yeah, it was really cool. I'd never done it. I can't imagine that it also translates really well to. I mean, can you imagine like Maverick or something? Yeah, that's what Jason, her husband Jason, he's like, he's like, I wish I had seen this, seen Top Gun Maverick in this. I'm like, yeah, me too. <laughs> I was like, I was like frustrated all of a sudden. I was like, man, that would have been amazing. <laughs> yeah, I think that um, you know, it, it was it was pricey. It definitely was very pricey. Yeah, it's not a cheap. So I would pick and choose because I definitely. I'm really surprised that a horror movie made such smart use of it. I wouldn't have guessed yeah. it was going to do that much. For I don't think it. they. I don't think they do. I don't because it's a lot of programming and coding to to like yeah. build out that. So I don't think they do it for that many movies anyway. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, I'm inspired. We need to definitely. If that's near us, we need to find it, Neil. Yeah, yeah. I'm all about it. Evil yeah. Dead. Oh my God! I wonder if they'll do it for. <gasps> Mm. I noticed your Evil Dead post from the background. And I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> this is the um, yeah. This is the monster room. <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's uh, what are you looking forward to the new Evil Dead? Yes, I'm glad you said that. I know a lot of people uh, are against it for some reason, but I think it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, 
<laughs> you don't have to love all of them. They don't all have to be your favorite. But like if you can keep getting content in a world that you love with creators that you love being involved, even if everyone is not for you, like why wouldn't you want to give it a shot? <laughs> you know? I mean, that's my my take on it. They're not all they're not all straight A's, but that's okay, you know. And the other ones still exist. It doesn't like uh, they're not like uh, you know nullified <laughs> if if a new one comes out. They don't erase them from history. Yeah. Exactly. So. I guess Star Wars. I guess in a way they do. Uh, it's hard to get the original Star Wars back. But... Yeah, I found it. You can get it. Oh, really? Where people actually did painstakingly make it old again. Oh, you mean like the despecialized oh. edition? Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. You got to like go through a process to get it. No. <laughs> so what's the next movie you guys are going to see? Anyone here? Probably Evil Dead. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Ren Renfield. Renfield. Oh. Yeah. That comes yeah. out this week. I'm so. excited. I'm going to see it tomorrow. There's an advanced what? screening. Oh, it's going to be so fun. Yeah, I will not be seeing it tomorrow. I know. I, that's why I didn't mention. I could have <laughs> got you a ticket to it. But uh, yeah, it's tomorrow. Uh, well, shout out for people uh, in the Boston area. Brad will show an, an, an advanced screening of it tomorrow. It's oh, wow. Go Atlanta, Atlanta filmmaker and actress and stunt uh, uh, person, uh, Jenna Kennel, is in it. She's. Yeah, she, former guest on the show. She's, yeah, she's, uh, she's yeah, really she's cool. cool. She's a very good director, super talented actress, and uh, from Terrifier. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess that's her big. Yeah. Everyone knows right. her from Terrifier. Um, but she's she's in it. Yeah, she's one of the one of the people in the in the support group. Yeah, yeah, she's in the trailer, which I was yeah. very excited about. Yeah. So were you guys sold from the get go? Like Nick Cage, I remember seeing there was like a shot from on set of Nick Cage walking around. And it was like, oh my lord, this is just yeah. amazing. Yeah, done. Yeah. Old. It's yeah. perfect. It's brilliant casting. <laughs> Have you seen the trailer that's black and white? It's like a tiny little nip that's black and white. Yeah. Mm. And now they're they're saying it's a direct sequel to the original Dracula, which I think is very exciting too. Yeah. I guess it could be. Yeah, I don't know. Anything could yeah. be a sequel. You just join yeah. it at one spot and then everything else can be whatever the hell yeah. you it's 100 years later and so yeah. that's what you do now you ignore all the other stuff you pick the one you like and you just move forward from there right that seems to be the <laughs> the uh the uh deciding or the common theme now right it's the extra the new exorcist movie is doing the same thing right they're doing oh they oh yeah they're skipping, they're skipping two and th three and just going straight and yeah just going straight to oh, the why i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Choose your own adventure. Yeah. I, I honestly haven't seen part two in forever. Um, but uh, yeah. three is good, but it's really kind of its own thing. Yeah. Three is cool. It's like when one of them doesn't hit with me from the franchises that I enjoy, and I won't like name a bunch of franchises. Because um, God knows I, ha you know, I have friends who have worked on all kinds of stuff. And when one doesn't hit with me, I'm always... <laughs> I'm always kind of like, all right, that one wasn't for me, but it's like Stockholm syndrome, man. I'm going, I, yeah, I'm sure going back. I mean, like, mm -hmm. they don't all hit, but that's okay. I help. I get enough out of them to bring me back. So, yeah. mm -hmm. all right. Well, anything else before we take off? I do have to. I have to be somewhere in a half hour. No, but that was fun. <laughs> Yeah. I I can stick around for a little bit. I the only place I have to be is I have to do my pro wrestling show in about a half an hour. Oh, that's great. Well, and this I'm just gonna switch shirts, but it'll, it'll look like I'm a totally different person. Do you switch sets as well? No, no. I thought about that originally. I do have some wrestling stuff around here, like. You need, it's, you, it's you need too to hard just, to like, move everything around. You need to get like, like a, a pull down thing where you just pull it down. It's a fake background. <laughs> yeah. I guess I could or just you put flip the your chair on. around. Right. right. Yeah. I was thinking it could be like one of those panels, like in a haunted house, where it just like turns, yep. rotates. All the other Lazy side. Susan. <laughs> yes. Oh dear, Neil. Nice. Yeah. No, we would never have known it was you. Yeah. That's a, that's a totally different guy. Yeah. Awesome. Right. But we got a lot of stuff. You guys are so kind. I'm like, Neil, no. 
<laughs> like, See, look, I have stuff from Annabelle that pops up on the show. Every once in a while. Annabelle, I can't talk. I bought tickets to spend the night in the chainsaw house. When somebody's like, oh, that's so nerdy, I'm like, uh, that's okay. Well, it's Neil, so I can just give him hell about everything. Do you think I'm loving just... giving hell? <laughs> nah, enjoy, man. I'm just tying up my mask. Don't don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm transfixed on the transformation. Yeah. This is a Ultimo Dragon mask. If, any, if anyone cares, <laughs> but yeah. I think your beard works very well with it. I'm it does sorry, actually. Yeah. It, does, it does work nicely. Yeah. I, I want to be supportive, but you've left my nerd wheelhouse, so I don't know yeah. how to best support you. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like cool. Yeah. I, I don't know anything. I, I do know that like my feed has a bunch of people very upset with Vince McMahon right now, but I feel like that's all all the time. So yeah, well, this is very strange. He's he's back in power in the company after leaving the company yeah. under uh yeah some yeah. bad uh some okay. bad stuff going on, and then they sold the company for like nine billion dollars. So it's a very weird time. But I'll be I'll be talking a lot about that in in, in shortly here. If you, Dan, if you'd like to learn more about the wrestling world, <laughs> it's a very loosely a wrestling uh, podcast. It's usually it's mostly just nonsense. Yeah. Dude, I have too many nerdy hobbies to venture into. Yeah, another, you, but... you can't add more. This is way Ooh, on yeah. room. <laughs> I don't know, really nerd. I mean, I grew up watching wrestling and Basket Case and playing Dungeons and Dragons and and Chess Club, I and mean, it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I am all. Sure. It would be cool today. It was not cool back in the 80s. No. Mm -mm. No. None of this stuff was cool in the 80s. It wasn't. Now it's like there's major TV shows. Terrifier has made it. Like yeah. mainstream. There's cocaine. Yeah, that's, there. that what was very weird. That we're not making it. That was fun uh, watching Terrifier. There's been a few movies over the last few years that was fun to watch in the theater for several reasons. And one of it was like there's normal people in the theater watching just like this totally insane film. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, super graphic and, you know, people yeah. thinking they're coming to see The Conjuring or something. And... I think it's kind of funny. It's interesting to me that like for a long time, I think it wasn't cool with like middle school and high school kids. Like my daughter was into horror movies and it was like not cool to be into horror movies and it was a thing that you know kids teased her about in like elementary and middle school and now it's cool again and it's so much fun because you know uh i don't know like a month ago or something she was taking a picture i have a signed screen script <clears throat> matthew lillard signed um screen oh, nice. and she was taking a picture of it and i was like what are you doing and she's like oh i'm gonna go show it off at school <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't. Oh, I was going to say it's really it's interesting. I remember when zombies became a big deal, like a really big deal, and Hulu became a big deal, and there was a lot of complaint from I won't say a lot, but there was a, a sizable amount of complaint from people who were in the horror community, like that's ours. You normies cannot have this. It is ours. So I get this. I get that on the one hand, but I feel like if things did not become more normalized, yeah, yeah you wouldn't have got a lot of these things. Yeah, right. there's, there's not a lot. There's not a lot of value in gatekeeping. There's just not. Yeah, you know? yeah I'm like enjoy it, man, and it, it means more content for all of us. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I will admit, every once in a while, you know, you're kind of like, hey, wait a minute, weren't you someone who made fun of? <laughs> Right. But all of us were introduced to, you know, I didn't, obviously I was born way after the universal horror movies came out, but you know, no one was yelling at me like, what are you watching those for? You know, I watched those when I was a little kid, you know, that's not your generation or whatever, but yeah, I mean, you're, you gotta be introduced to horror at, at some level. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm like, Hey, enjoy. Cool. The only thing was the only person that ever uh, at a convention did not let me take their picture, and this was just as press walk around taking pictures. I wasn't like getting a photo op. Was uh, it was one of the zombies from The Walking Dead who played like an armless zombie, like, and nothing against them. That's cool, but I was going around taking you know, all these you know celebrities, and he was like, "No, and you can't take my picture." And I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> but it was uh, it was it was very fun. I found it funny. Yeah, it's interesting. And I remember there for a little while though the walk some of the Walking Dead people they were they were charging just to say hi to them. 
What? And uh, Sid was really against that. Sid Haig. Uh, yeah, Sid was freaking awesome, and he was. I, I he has a special place in my heart for a number of reasons, but he was particularly kind to my daughter when she and, was little. Oh, very nice. He very always nice. loved yeah. the kids, and I enjoyed seeing him. He always remembered me, and he always yeah. Yeah, and a defense to to those people. It might not have been them. It might have been whoever was representing them. But they, they had like uh, like ten dollars or whatever just to say hi to him. It was crazy. Yeah, he was really he was really uh, when Horror Pack first started. He was he signed uh, like we had gotten uh, several copies of one of his movies, and he signed them all for us just to wow. you know, yeah, just, just help helped us get kind of launched because we were able to use those as like giveaways to promote it. You know, so yeah. It, he's the first guest ever on the show when we started no on the first episode in 2006. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Great dude. Very good. Yeah. Dude. I feel, I feel very fortunate that my, um, my convention experiences have been, I mean, 99.9% .9 absolutely wonderful. I have had very little uh, to not be happy about in meeting people who I admire. So I'm really grateful for that. Yeah, I only have one bad experience, really, and it's there's videos of it. I won't talk, but but uh, yeah, I'll mention his name, Ian White. No one knows who he is, but but uh, yeah, he was the only person that I had a bad experience with at, at a convention. And you're just gonna leave it there? That's not a story, Neil. See, I well, I've been told it, to to get the real like venom. You have to watch the original <laughs> video that I when I talk about it right after. But here's the quick story. So. We were at uh at, at the convention. We had our tape. We had our booth, the without your head booth, and it was right next to Ian White, who was a tall guy from. He played Predator, I think, in one of the Predators, um, and I think he was in um, uh, Game of Thrones. And so you're sitting there, and I was literally right next to him the whole weekend. And um, and so the last day, I was like, "Oh, can we get? Can I get an interview with you?" And he said. Don't take this the wrong way, but I will not. I do not want to be seen on video with you. And I was like, "What the hell?" Like, and uh, I was like, "Well, can I just get a quick uh, video? Like, uh, this is Ian White. You know, you're listening without your head." And somebody said, "I will not uh, endorse endorse you." And I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> it's just like well, that's so. Then hardcore man. <laughs> yeah. So then we went, and I I was uh, hosting the panels. And we were coming back, and and John, uh, who's a co-host at the time, he's like, "Ah, oh, Neil, let's just turn around. Let's not go back to the table." And I was like, "What? Well, why?" And he's like, well. "And so we walked to the table, and there was a row of like five uh, podcast guys uh, sitting there doing interviews with them, and <laughs> it was just, it was, uh, it was very rude. It was very strange, but yeah. it's it was it's funny now to think about. It. Oh, and then to top it off, so uh, then that night we were, I was telling everyone the story, and I just told John Dugan. And uh, we were in the bar, and Ian White comes in, and he looks around, he waves, and he sits at the uh, at the bar. And John very loudly goes, "Neil, I'll do an interview with you anytime." Hello, John. <laughs> and he just turned around and put his head. It was very funny. And then my brother's like, "Yeah, uh, John and, and Neil, they're like five six, and they're picking a fight with the seven two guy." But, yeah. I it's saw that you know. <laughs> You what? Find, like Voltron? <laughs> like Master Blaster? You carry him on my yes. shoulder or something? Two, two dudes in a raincoat. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that you had Danny Trejo on your show. So yeah, I Danny Trejo is awesome. very cool. I think that was the first interview that Annabelle and I did together uh, on video. I love him. He was you, yeah, you, you have stumbled upon Dana's uh, favorite oh. person. <laughs> oh, really? I, uh, yeah, yeah. One of my proudest moments of the show i did a uh it was just a one-on-one -on -one, uh panel with danny trejo in la it was very cool it was very cool yeah his um i love his panels he's such a fun storyteller and he's so great to meet and i've met him so many times and it's so funny because he like you know kind of remembers me but doesn't remember my name and um so john dugan knows of my love for danny trejo and he was in the same room as danny trejo the first time i met him his table was in the same room and he was like come on dana come on dana <laughs> you can do it and i went over there and i got the first picture you know and he's got his arm around me and then there is a whole series of pictures because he kissed me <laughs> and i'm going the, the series of pictures in between it was just like nice kiss on the cheek yeah. you, know, you know but the pictures are like oh my god uh, <laughs> 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 like, we just 
you're gonna make that into an animated gif yeah, make it cool. yeah. yeah. yeah son was like it was so fun to watch i was so happy for you i love it love yeah fun. but he's super nice he was uh really nice to annabelle and i oh and we gave him a hoodie he has a without your head hoodie it's very, very. Well, i'll look that one up for sure i haven't seen yeah. it awesome yeah with uh, with annabelle's art in the back so that's pretty cool uh, yeah, that came out really good. Yeah, it's a, oh, you guys would like it. It's a zombie eating a peach because it was for Atlanta. Mm -hmm. it's a good <laughs> and of course, you guys like peaches because you're in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like driving in Atlanta where every road is named Peach Tree. <laughs> Here, it's everything is oceans. We went and bought peaches when we were in Atlanta, and then we looked at them. It's like, oh, it's and it had a sticker from Chile. Oh, <laughs> We're like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this has been very fun. We'll do this. We have to do this more often, Dana and Chris. With well, Chris, maybe, but we can. <laughs> we can talk. We can talk. Uh, not being live as well. So yeah, hit us up. <laughs> yeah oh really i only i only speak when when it's i'm on camera when the world sees it <laughs> fair enough otherwise I, I just sit in silence is there even life off camera this is, doesn't even happen no. right this is like back early when you're saying if something's real or not if i'm not on camera do i really exist interesting interesting we'll have to dissect this all right. Well, I'm going to eat my late dinner. And Annabelle, um, when you get back to your project, yes, I won't out you. But I uh, storyboarded a little today during a meeting at work. Okay. Well, I look forward to hearing more soon. So let me know how I can help. Awesome. Awesome. Thank and you. it's also very nice to have Annabelle back on the show. Looks like it'll be a regular thing here. I'll so try. that's very nice. We'll see what happens. Yeah. In transitioning and work stuff so hopefully yes so it, this is my first maybe regular and i'm glad it was with you guys agree i'm right. glad you came I'm glad hey guys we'll take care all right bye. you too catch you soon bye. bye bye everybody it's us yeah i'm gonna uh i'll just are we live yeah.